Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a book haul. I've got all of the books that I've required in the last two months and I also want to get started by showing you some glasses from Tyne Glasses that were kindly gifted to me. I've got three pairs here to show you, one of which are sunglasses and the other two are blue light glasses. I don't wear prescription glasses but you can also get prescription glasses from Tyne and I'll have links to all of these specific ones down below as well as their website. So to get started, I've got my sunglasses that I'm going to be rocking this summer. I love yellow sunglasses that tint everything yellow rather than black because you still feel the summery lightness vibe. So those are my sunglasses. For my blue light glasses, I really use blue light glasses for editing, for long periods of writing. I've got these ones that are framed in black and I really like them as well. I think these are my favourite blue light glasses. And then last but not least, I also have some tint yellow blue light glasses, which are quite similar to my sunglasses but not quite the same. <laughs> I feel like a model doing this but these are my three pairs of glasses that I have so thank you to Tyne Glasses for sending them my way, links down below and now with that, without further ado, let's get right down to the books. To kick us off, every month I try and buy one red book and one unread book to limit myself and this month I've kind of broken that rule a little bit but let's get right down to it. So for the first month, which I believe was March, I bought two in the same series. I bought Monstrous Volume 3 and Monstrous Volume 4. So I've already read Volume 3. I borrowed this from a library when I was using my library and now I bought Volume 4 so I can continue the series. I really like the Monstrous series. I've really been enjoying it and Monstrous is following this girl who has one arm and a monster kind of lives with in her and as well as having a monster living within her body, she is also searching for some background, some history about her mother and it's all about her being hunted, her monster and her history and I think it's really really good. It's very complex and difficult to describe and capture in words but I'm very much looking forward to reading the fourth volume and just continuing on with this graphic novel series. The artwork for this series is absolutely stunning. And then in the month of April, I kind of had to buy more than one book, which you'll see. And I didn't buy one unread and one read. I just bought both read. So it's not actually adding anything to my TBR, which is good, I guess. So the first thing I did was something I rarely, I feel like I never do. I think I've never done this before, but I did it for the first time is I bought a double copy of Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. So the first edition that I have of this is the Alcrate Special Edition, which is blue. It looks like this and it's beautiful and I really wanted that edition because it's signed by Maggie Stiefvater. It's got beautiful artwork under the dust jacket, but when I say under the dust jacket, I mean if you turn the dust jacket inside out, so I needed to get that dust jacket. But blue is my least favourite colour whereas orange is my favourite colour and I actually like the orange more so I just you know I gave in it's been like a whole year maybe longer I think it's been longer than a year but I finally gave in and just got myself the orange copy so I could be happy and you know that is okay that is valid so this is the spin-off series to the Raven Cycle I will say no more I talk about the Raven Cycle a lot and it's also best if you don't know anything about this one if you're planning to read the Raven Cycle so actually by not giving you a synopsis I'm doing you a favour I bought three books secondhand and this has a story behind it because I bought Gone, Lies and Hunger by Michael Grant which are the first three books in the Gone series. It's a six book series and it's one that I read in my childhood. Look at those sprayed edges. And it's a series that I read in my childhood and I absolutely adore this series and I'm really much looking forward to rereading it very soon. However, I did not own books Lies and Hunger 2 and 3. I borrowed them from my primary school library which of course now I don't attend because I'm not in primary school. So I wanted to get them for myself. However, this whole series has had a cover change and you cannot really get these covers new anymore and if you do they're very very rare so for ages I was keeping an eye on the second hand you know available shops that I have around me looking for anyone who was selling these covers these editions because not because I wanted it to match my others because the rest I've got in hardcover and then in paperback but just because I don't like the new covers which have people on them and look so ugly in comparison to this and it's just a bonus that it also has the sprayed edges and these are absolutely brand new the person who who was selling them has never ever read them. In fact, they were in 
the slipcase for the trilogy box set and I was like wow I will take those off your hands so I did and now I have the complete series so because she was selling them as a three I couldn't just buy the two books that I wanted and now I've got a double copy of Gone I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet because I'm definitely not getting rid of the copy of Gone that I already own which has been reread many times it has broken spines and worn edges and it's just a mess but it's my mess so we'll see what I do with that double copy so next up I have some gifts I was gifted two books as a late birthday thing from Hannah from Hannah Kay and she has a beautiful bookstagram but also a lovely book blog so I'll leave both of those down below for you to go and check out and the first thing that she got me was The Surprising Power of a Good Dumpling by Wei Chim. We follow our main character who has her hands full trying to help out her dad at their restaurant but also looking after her siblings because her mum is depressed and always stays in bed but when a new boy delivery boy Rory comes around maybe he can provide a good distraction and then her mum starts to get out of bed and things go from bad to worse and I feel like this one focuses on mental health but not from the perspective of somebody who is struggling with it but the perspective of living with someone being a child of someone who's struggling with it and that is not something I've read about a lot so I'm very curious I've seen very good reviews and I believe the author lives in Australia and Hannah also gifted me Legend Born by Tracy Dion which I'm so 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 excited to read I actually have not heard a negative review for the first book in this fantasy series and it's been pitched to me as dark academia Arthurian legend retelling that also deals with the theme of grief a lot and you know if it's dealing with the theme of grief my interest is already there so I'm very curious to see what I'm going to think of this book and I've heard that it does very good job with the romantic relationship as well in ways that people don't expect to enjoy it but then really do so I'm just very very curious we've got some black girl magic on the cover I can't wait to read this book Another late birthday present was from Cara from Wild Book Garden who was just so thoughtful in choosing out The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte and she also got it in the Penguin Classics editions which are editions of classics that I collect and this one is following the mysterious tenant who turns up at Wildfell Hall and everybody thinks that she's horrible and and I think it's all about that I've heard so many people really really enjoy this book and I'm really curious to try it for myself I'm so excited Cara also read it I enjoyed it so it's also a Cara recommendation and if you're new here I often really like what she recommends so Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll enjoy this one just as much too. Then we have a few gifts that were just pleasant surprises. So on Instagram, in one of my posts, I talk about how my favourite love language is when somebody, you know, thinks of a book that you might really like and then gives it to you and then you read it and really like it. This often happens with my older sister, April. I was recently just giving her the Knife of Never Letting Go series and she read all of them and really enjoyed them. And so she saw that Instagram post and decided to do the same thing as well. And she sent me Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O because recently my older sister read it and really loved it and now wants me to read it and I am excited to do so and just let her know my thoughts. I think April also read Bear Town. It's about time that it goes the other way. So in this one we have a prophecy that was said that one day a planet will be discovered that's close by Earth and it's going to be a utopia that is going to be built and people have to go there and make it into this utopia but now that day has come true they finally found this planet and they're sending 10 people over there to make it a new brand new utopia and I feel like it's going to be very interesting I haven't read that many utopia creation stories and I feel like it's probably going to go wrong somewhere I am looking forward to reading this and then we've got two non-fiction books that were just nice surprises from some booktube friends the first one that we have here is Disability Visibility which is by a range of authors but it's edited by Alice Wong and this one is a collection of essays to do with disability I think it's grounded in the US setting and it's about people's experiences as disabled people living there I'm very much always wanting to learn about different people's kind of experiences that they have and I would like to support the disabled community and learn more about the disabled community so I'm very much looking forward to these essays and I have to say a big thank you to Abby from Abby of Pernal for surprising me with this and just making my day completely. The other non-fiction we have here is from Victoria from What Victoria Read who is 
absolutely lovely. If you haven't checked out her channel, then please do. And she sent me It's Not About the Burqa, which is edited by Miriam Khan, but again is done by several different authors as they talk about their experiences being Muslim and about how it has a lot more to do than with just wearing the burqa and I am very much interested in learning more about different people's experiences as I said before but also you know with Islamophobia I think it's very important to learn from Muslim authors there's been a lot of rights that have been violated recently or bills put through that shouldn't be for example looking at France recently with some of the bills that went through to do with policing hijabs and Muslim culture is just so disappointing to see so I feel like more than now more than ever this is also a very important collection to read and learn from and process. We've got some books that I hauled in from other people's unhauls. The first unhaul was Hannah from Ledette M. She was unhauling An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson and I decided to steal this copy from her. I read this a few years back now when I was in Rome and I've got a reading vlog of me doing that and I really enjoyed this. I'm not usually a big fan of fey romance but I found the main character in this one, Rook, to just be incredibly hilarious and all of the characters are just so nice and genuine. I feel like it's quite a calm romantic story which I know is not everybody's taste because they want more drama, they want more sass but mostly this was just a lot of fun. It was sweet, it was funny and it had a magical kind of background. I would definitely pitch this as a romance with a fantasy background rather than you know a fantasy book with a romance in it. I really enjoyed it. The cover is beautiful and I was actually intending to buy a copy when she mentioned that she was unhauling it and I decided to steal it off of her hands. And alongside sending me that, she also sent over a copy of Fat Lip, which is her own book. And I recently read this one last month, so in my vlogs you can see some of my thoughts on it. But these are autobiographical slash fictional stories to do with all kinds of love, friendship, family and romantic love. And they can be very funny, they can be very heartwarming and they can be very bittersweet. And I really enjoyed reading this collection. And then my younger sister did her first ever unhaul last month which made me such a proud older sister and one of the books that she unhauled was Munster by Michael Grant which is the first book in the sequel series to the Gone series and I've heard that this series is just not as good as the first one and my younger sister didn't like it but I'm very curious to at least give the first book a try and see if it's going to be up my alley or not. I'm just hoping. I've been a bit burned by sequel series to my favourite series recently like the Artemis Fowl sequel series wasn't good. We'll see how it goes with this one. And then we've got some review copies and I really need to calm down and I'm going to be focusing on review copy reading next month and thank you to all of the publishers or authors or editors who sent them my way. I'm very very grateful. I'm looking forward to reading all of them. So the first one is Quarantine Comics by Rachel Smith and this one is a comic which is a quite you know chunky for a comic that has to do with experiences that the author had while in quarantine so it's very much pandemic based and you can see that I've already started reading this one the day it arrived I already started reading also because I've been in a bit of a reading slump since last month so just taking it easy with some graphic novels and comics I'm really enjoying this one I find it very very relatable and there'll be more of this in my wrap-up so the next book I have here is Dream Country by Ashe Brown which recently came out and this one is a fantasy book that sounds absolutely amazing. I'm just going to read you the back because it really sells this book very well. It says triplets, gods of sleep, dreams and nightmares. They are all suspects in their own mother's murder and they are separated by deadly gates of horn and ivory but what happens when those gates collapse and it just sounds fantastic. I know it's based on different kinds of mythology and I am ready for this book to rock my world. I am ready. Excuse me, Why Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney and this one is a young adult contemporary which has to do with the main character who makes lists about everything, lists about the days that she's cried, lists about her greatest fears and just every kind of list you can think of, a list maker for true. One day one of her list gets posted on Instagram by an anonymous account and this account threatens to post all the rest of her lists in the public domain unless she completes her seven greatest fears and faces them and it desperate to stop her list from being published publicly she teams up with the last person she knows to have found her journal or to have seen her journal and try and get 
all of her fears faced. So this sounds like fun. I've definitely been in the mood for young adult contemporaries lately. So then we have some book break books and one I'm really excited about is Bridget Jones' Diary. This is the gorgeous 25th anniversary edition and I have watched Bridget Jones before and I really enjoyed that film. I just thought it was really good fun and I really liked the character of Bridget Jones and how much of a mess she was but like a wonderful perfect mess. Looking forward to finally reading the book. One I am incredibly, incredibly excited about is The Ophelia Girls by Jane Healy and this one is following these girls who are dramatic, they are in this estate and they're having a great summer pretending to be the drowning Ophelia when real tragedy strikes them and then fast forward a couple of years one of these girls is returning to the estate with her family that is facing a lot of tensions because they think some time away together with family bonding time could maybe heal them and help them but when a mysterious guest from her past shows up everything might fall out of order. That just sounds so fascinating to me and as soon as I saw Ophelia in the title I wanted to read it and I am so excited I might explode. I just, I'm excited to read this book. Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho which is a book I'm hearing a lot more about and it follows a young girl who starts to hear a voice in her head and she soon realises that this is the voice of her grandmother and as well as that her grandmother is talking to this Malaysian deity, the Blackwater Goddess and she decided that she would get revenge, her grandmother decided that she would get revenge on a tycoon that has ruined some area and now that her grandmother, her Ahma, is dead she is tasking her granddaughter Jess with this task. So that's what's going to be going on. It sounds like it could be very very interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing which direction this takes. I was also sent The Stone Age by Jen Hatfield which is one that I read last month already and I've talked about in my wrap up and in my vlogs and this is a poetry collection that is very much inspired by the place where Jen lives which is her Shetfield home and it's got lots of earthy stony imagery but it's also got quite a bit of a unique formatting going on and it's got neurodiversity as one of the themes that it talks about and communication. I really enjoyed this poetry connection and I would really recommend it. Then we have Fireborn by Aisling Fowler and this is a middle grade that comes out later in the year in September and in this one we follow our main character who lives in a world where these monsters exist and she gives up her name and pledges herself to a group that will help her hunt down monsters so now she's named 12 and she's going to track these monsters and get revenge. I love this arc edition and I'm looking forward to reading more middle grade. Dark Lady by Akala and this one is following Henry who is a 15 year old boy. He's an orphan, he's a thief and he has magical powers and he's inspired by the image of the dark lady in Shakespeare's poetry. Again, anything Shakespeare mentioned, you've got me, you've got me wanting to read the book and it sounds like it's going to be one epic adventure that has to do with that. I've already taken a peek at a few of these pages and I think it's going to be one for me. What's mine and what's yours by Namina Costa and from what I believe this one has to do with education and the racism within education. So there is a mostly all black public school but they those students have to move over to a mostly white school and it's about the clashes and the entanglements that happens when that occurs and I think also the parents start to get involved so you've got these two families on either side of this debate of whether the black students are welcome or not and it's what goes down when the schools combine. And then last but not least we have my books that I bought at the secondhand bookshop. In one of my vlogs I mentioned that I went there to donate some books and if I go there to donate some books I also buy a few and I don't count it in my buying plan or intention that I have for myself because the proceeds also go to a good cause. One of the first ones I got was The Penelope by Margaret Atwood which I've already read last month and unfortunately I did not like. This one follows Penelope and she's telling her own story. She's the wife of Odysseus in Greek mythology and for once she's been given the voice to tell her own story and also that of the maids who end up hanged in the mythology. And I just didn't vibe with the narrative, I didn't vibe with how little I felt like it added to the story and at the lack of autonomy that Penelope had. So all in all this one wasn't one for me and I think I'll just be donating it right back to the secondhand shop very soon. Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames and I just got this one because I saw it and I've seen so many positive reviews for it. Everybody says that it's very entertaining but it's also full of action and in this one we follow some mercenaries who were you know the big 
biggest and the baddest when they were younger but now they're older and they've kind of drifted apart and they're not the same as they were before but the band is getting back together. Even the synopsis just sounds like it's going to be a very fun book. What I tend to do with classics is get classics in an edition that is just cheap and secondhand and then if I like it I try and get it in the Penguin Classics edition if I possibly can or a more beautiful edition. So when I saw a secondhand copy of North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell I just thought I'd pick it up and give it a go and see what I think of it. And this one follows a woman who moves from North to South and one of them is kind of a rural countryside place and then I think she goes to the north where it's an industrial complex and it's about the shift in that you know movement the displacement and what it's like to immigrate and how it feels to be there so that's all I really know gonna give it a go seeing positive reviews for this classic and I want to try it for myself then up next we have Dry by Jane Harper so Jane Harper is an author whose name I just know and I've always been meaning to try more thrillers I just need to pick them up and I saw Christina from Christina Campbell books really likes Jane Harper's work so I thought as soon as I saw this one I'll just give it a try I haven't read the synopsis but I think I might just go into this thriller without knowing anything at all and see how I find it. And the first one you entirely have to blame on Abby from Abby of Pelinor and that is Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela because she recently read it because she recently read it and found it to be absolutely amazing so I really wanted to try and read it myself. I've also been very interested in reading something by Nelson Mandela for a very long time because I want to hear more of his story from the man himself so I will very much be doing that with this big book and then last but not least I also picked up Ptolemy's Gate by Jonathan Strout and this is the third and final book in the Amulet of Samarkand series. So I started this series a very long time ago. I read the first one and I really really enjoyed it and I read the second one and I found it mediocre and I thought I'm not going to finish the series I'll just leave it there but when I saw this one in the secondhand shop I thought you know what I might as well get it and finish off the trilogy. So in the first one we follow I believe his name is Nathaniel we follow a young magician who is just getting into his magician ways and he raises a djinn who is a bit too much for his level to handle and then other things start to go down in the magician world and he gets entangled up into it but also the djinn is as well and I found the first book so funny the footnotes were entertaining but the second book took a direction and introduced some characters I felt quite indifferent about and I'm curious to see how everything's going to come together and come to an end with this third and final book and there we have it those are all the books that I recently picked up and hopefully can read very very soon please let me know in the comment section down below what was the last book you bought received or acquired give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say onwards and upwards excelsior